only one instance when cops pushed back against their masters, and it was during the one and only police strike in Boston in 1919. In 1919, uh, the police starting wages was about $2 a day and hadn't increased in 60 years. Look, guys, these are slave patrol wages, okay? And by 1919, these cops were harassing black people and the working class at like a much higher rate, you know? Like they were really ramping that shit up. So they worked seven days a week, 72 to 98 hours a week, had to stay in station houses with very little sanitation, beds, or even toilets. Now, uh, the way this kind of worked was that the governor of Massachusetts appointed a commissioner, uh, but the mayor was in charge of the police budgets. So all the successes were you know, accredited to the governor while the failures were scapegoated to the mayor. So in June of 1919, the AFL suggested that the police unionize and the commissioner, under the order of Governor Calvin Coolidge, declined them. He stated that they were state officers, not employees. Translation, you owl bitch now, motherfuckers. You owl bitch. That's basically what he said. So by August, the eight officers that tried to unionize were fired. Uh, and Coolidge was about to pass the legislation that would make it illegal for government employees to unionize. And a banker came out and said that uh, the government, governor should recognize, uh, recognize the union as long as they, they promise not to strike. Now, four out of five Boston newspapers sided with the banker's compromise. And so did four out of five dentists. Everybody was very confused about why they voiced their opinion, but you know, good for them. It's nice that they did that. It's nice that they did that. Now let's let's be clear about this, right? The bankers' call to ensure that the police shouldn't strike but still have their union wasn't in solidarity, but rather it was to make sure that his wealth was going to be protected. He wanted the cops to get paid some more so they'd protect him when we the people came for what was rightfully ours. Okay, and only one out of five dentists saw that. Now Coolidge, Calvin Coolidge rejected the compromise and delegitimized the police union. So the cops got together and they voted to see if they should strike. And out of 1,100 members of the, for, of the police union that they did form, only two objected to striking. So on September 9th, 1919, at 5.45 p.m., 72% of the Boston police didn't report for duty. Coolidge immediately panics, calls the Metro Park Police Department, and over half of them refused to participate in solidarity with the Boston cops. Now, during the first night uh, with no cops, we got what, what uh, is referred to as hooliganism, which I think is a hilarious term. Uh, basically, one cigar store got busted into and robbed. There were a couple of purse snatches that happened, but the rest of the time, everybody was just kind of partying, you know? Like there was like music being played, people were drinking outside, there was outdoor gambling, and this was the first time that somebody wore a barrel as an outfit. You guys remember <laughs> those cartoons? Yeah, that's where that came from. And some of them were violating some of the most cardinal rules of society like entering stores with no shoes or shirts and still getting service. Hooliganism. Hooliganism, you guys. That's, that's anarchy. I, right? Yeah. No shirts, no shoes. Come on in. That's what they were saying. <laughs> so obviously the establishment freaks out, right? Calvin Coolidge loses his shit. Calvin Coolidge was just like, there will be no fun unless the state mandates your fun with specific guidelines and all of the paperwork is failed. I am Fuhrer, I mean Governor Coolidge. <laughs> <laughs> Who said Fuhrer? Who said, was it you, Charlie? Was it, kill, kill Charlie because I'm the governor. Don't. <laughs> Very upset about this. So now the mayor starts panicking, and not only does he call the state guard to be act activated, but he also deputizes Harvard students 
to go on patrol as volunteer policemen. <laughs> so these children that had become the police, turns out, couldn't handle the mobs of people who saw them as the enemy. So it turns out that you can't tell people to go home by quoting Shakespeare at their face. <laughs> who knew? Right? It only pisses them off, man. It only pisses them off. They get real upset about it. So the guardsmen had to be called to save the children. Uh, and then uh, Coolidge activated 5,000 more uh, National Guards who were ordered to use live rounds against civilians in Boston. Now, fortunately, only nine people were killed. This could have been a lot worse. And only nine people were killed. Uh, and this was a real big bummer for the war machine, you guys. Uh, they would have loved to see some double-digit death tolls. You know, the war machine loves those big numbers. They're like Texas. They really like the big death tolls. They're big fans of them. <laughs> now, by this time, though, uh, businesses had boarded up and or, or they closed early or <laughs> they took up arms themselves to basically fight off the National Guard, the deputized Harvard kids, and anybody that wanted to get into their stores. So all this is happening. Uh, Samuel Gompers, who of the AFL, reaches out to Calvin Coolidge and he urges them to reinstate the officers that got fired and open up negotiations. Coolidge said no, and this is a very good reason, uh, because uh, uh, Russia. So, so no negotiations. Of course. <laughs> yeah. By the fourth day, the guard had crushed the strike with force. The police officers remained fired, and then they were replaced by out-of-work World War I veterans with untreated PTSD. No. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think they would have been better off with the Harvard kids, you know? <laughs> I think it would have been really nice to see in, in the 1920s somebody trying to break into a store and somebody trying to quote Hamlet, you know, to be or not to be. <laughs> like, we're just going to leave out of confusion. <laughs> Now, these veterans that became cops, they got a pay increase, they got better hours, they got benefits, they got clean living quarters, which is all the things that the striking cops were asking for. So it's not that the state couldn't afford to improve their lives, it's that they fucking wouldn't. And that was, this is proof of that. The message that the police got were that they were slaves of the state. So there are no good cops because their masters won't allow them to exist. So with all of that in mind, it turns out that all cops are, in fact, bastards. <laughs> now, as my friend Eleanor Goldfield uh, points out, indeed, when we say all cops are bastards, we do not mean that all people go into policing want to harm the public, but rather the institution of police ultimately harms the public. It's in their DNA. In 1919, it became illegal for police to unionize until the powers that be saw that it would highly, highly benefit them. So today there are several union organizers that want the AFL-CIO to remove the police union's affiliation with them, which would delegitimize the police unions again. So what, what, these, uh, what some of these union people are saying is that the police unions serve as the interest of police force as an arm of the state, not the interest of people as laborers. Real unions are the key to push back against the overpowered, overfunded, corrupt crybabies in the police unions. Uh, you guys saw that video of the New York Police Department of like, this is not state. I am a bad, I will fight all of your dads, right? Like that guy. <laughs> Real unions aren't about membership, but about solidarity with the working class and improving the lives of the workers while fighting for social justice. There's a long-standing history of unions standing up for racial justice because real unions stand up for all of the working class, regardless of skin color, gender, creed, religion, sexuality, or whether or not you want to wear a barrel as a suit. They don't care. <laughs> They're all for that shit. These police unions, on the other hand, have raised funds for killer cops like Darren Wilson, who murdered Mike Brown, 
Daniel Pantaleo, who murdered Eric Garner and several others, right? They don't represent the people because the police aren't part of us. They don't represent us. But with leaders from the transport union standing with their workers who refuse to bus protesters to prison or cops down to protest means that we can use our solidarity as a strength to push back against the bastard cops and amplify the defund movement. Hey folks, uh, thank you so much for checking out this, uh, this video. Thank you very much for tuning into this channel. If you enjoyed the video, uh, if you like what you see here, please give it a thumbs up and share this out with whoever you think would benefit from this. Share it with your friends, your family, your enemies, whoever you think needs to, to, to watch uh, content like this. And uh, I'm also gonna be doing uh, live virtual stand-up comedy shows via Zoom. Uh, called the Citizen Revolution Comedy Shows. Their tickets are available for those right now. Uh, you got to get your tickets, and, and, and you got to get them as soon as you possibly can uh, for two reasons. One, that's how I'm going to be able to communicate the login information to you guys. That way we don't have any unwanted visitors showing up in the, uh, in the virtual theater, the Zoom virtual theater. Uh, and, uh, and, and I'm just one man, and it's very difficult to keep track of uh, a bunch of different people that I need to give tickets out to. So uh, that's how I'm going to be able to communicate the, the login information as efficiently as possible. The second reason to get them quickly, too, is because there are limited spots uh, and half the ticket sales are going to help a uh, grassroots organization, venue, journalist, uh, and so on and so forth. Every, every single week, it's a brand new show, and every single week, we have a brand new grassroots organization or venue or journalist or, uh, that uh, we are going to be donating half those ticket sales to. So um, if you want to be a part of that, uh, please get those tickets as soon as you can. And uh, you can you can make a one-time donation, you can or you can become a sustaining member uh, by going to my website krishmohan.com as well, k-r-i-s-h-m-o-h-a-n.com. Uh, you can uh, you can become a sustaining member via Patreon uh, over Bandcamp or directly on my website. That gets you free tickets to some of these live virtual stand-up comedy shows. It gets you unreleased stand-up comedy material, gets early access to uh, my web series, Fork Full of Noodles, the extended big long episodes of, of that. Um, you also get, if you miss a Citizen Revolution show, don't, we got you, We're, we'll, we put those up for our patrons and uh, our sustaining members to check out. So. I hope you guys can, uh, if, you, if you have the ability to make a donation, you do. If you have the ability to become a sustaining member, that you do. But the important thing is to make sure that you like, share, and subscribe to this stuff because content like this often doesn't get shown to the maximum number of people. So I depend very much on you guys to get the word out there. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate all the people that do tune in, uh, that have become patrons, that have made donations, that buy these tickets. You guys are fucking awesome. Uh, it's it sure as hell helping me out, uh, uh, you know, in, in this tough time, and uh, and it's helping me continue produce these shows uh, at the at a, at a higher quality than um, than before, and and keep pushing uh, to create to create these these videos to the best of uh, to the best of my ability, and add you know the the, the cooler bells and whistles to it. I'm, I'm the only person that works on these shows. I'm, I'm doing all this stuff. So uh, every every little bit, every every sustaining member and every ticket sale totally, totally fucking helps out. Um, and I appreciate the hell out of it. Thank you so much. And we'll see you at the next video.